How are we doing today? We're going to go over a biscuit joiner and some doweling. Remember, whenever using power tools, eye safety and ear protection. Got to keep those eyes and ears safe. All right, right here what we have is a uh, biscuit joiner. These are biscuits. So what we have is three different sizes. We have a zero, a 10, and a 20. And then this is the biscuit joiner. So it's a very, very simple little device. And what I used to do back in the old days, before they came out with this, we did doweling. And doweling is really good to do, but I could do all of these methods right here, but I could do it with biscuits, uh, very easier. On the doweling jig we have right here, so this lines them up, and to get it on the other one right here, we have our centers. So we'll show that a little later, but right now we're gonna go over the nice, easy biscuit joiner. This project right here, all right, when you're going over and you have miter joints, they're not really strong. They also slide when you're clamping them up. But if you have a biscuit in there, it's going to make it a lot stronger. Remember, joints. Why do you do joints? All right? For looks, for strength. All right? And the other thing is, okay, why don't we do everything really, really, really strong? It's the time it takes to make the joint which is the cost of it. So you want the strongest joint and the most cost effective joint. So you're not spending a lot of time on it. So miters are really, really quick. They look good. They give you a nice clean edge. All right, we're gonna make them stronger by putting a biscuit in there. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna put these together. So if I was clamping this, I would clamp it with a band clamp, rubber band, and it would be hard to do. Biscuits are going to make it stronger because, remember, most of this is end grain. And the end grain of the board is the straws. So there's not a lot of strength. When you end grain to end grain, it doesn't really hold. There's no uh, strength there. So if I stuck a biscuit in there, now I have some gluing surface and some strength to it. So all we want to do is we're going to take this and we're going to line up where we're gonna go in with these. Now, I take this apart and I biscuit it and then I'm like, oh, which one's lined up? So what I wanna do is one goes with one, two goes with two, three goes with three, four goes with four, five goes with five, Six goes with six. It's nice to have them labeled. So now, the, the biscuit joiner, if you had a long board, and I'm gonna take this for example, you'll be able to see it. I'm gonna line this up on the line. I'm gonna line this up on the line. Hold this down. And now I'm gonna pull back, just so you can see it. So I'm lined up here, and then all I do is push, and the blade comes out. Now depending on the thickness of your wood, you're gonna raise this up or down. If I had really thick wood, I might wanna do two biscuits. This is three quarter inches thick, so we're not gonna adjust it. But right in here, what I can do is adjust this up and down. I also, if I needed to, I could do different angles. So right now, what we're doing is we're just doing 90 degrees, so we're gonna lock that in. Now, you notice I'm doing all of this, and what we are is unplugged. Never make any adjustments with the machine plugged in. Now, when would you use a zero versus a 10 versus a 20? And this is critical on here, because what I wanna do here is I can change that from a 20 to a 10 to a zero. And what that indicates is how deep the blade is going in. So for an example, if I was going in with these right here, I, do I want to go with a 20 or should I go with a 10 or should I go with a zero? 
Now the zero is a little smaller. I'm going to want to try to get as much as I can on it. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go in with the tens. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to set my depth for 10 and then I'm ready to go. It's always best to always do a practice cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in. What I like to use is either the sanding board, it's very versatile, so it will hold the boards or the router sanding mat. And what that does is it will allow me to hold the board without it moving. So remember, we had just done before the pocket cutter, all right? I could use the pocket cutter and put these two boards together. Or what I could do is I could use the biscuit joiner and do the same thing. All we're going to do is line up. I'm all lined up. Turn it on. Slowly go in. So now what I want to do is I am going to take a 10 biscuit and what I want to do is put it in there. And that is perfect. We're about halfway on it. Now if I went in with a 20, you're going to notice that that's too far out. I put my other board, it will not go in. And if I was in there with a zero, it's, I'm not going to push it all the way. It would be really hard for me. I will there. That's all you're going to do for holding power. That's nothing. So you want to make sure that you have the right setting on what you're doing. So now I'm good. So now what I can do is I can take these and line them up. You don't have to be really, really precise. Don't sit here, I gotta get right on. There I'm off, but I can be really, you know, right next to it, that's good. You got a little bit of play to work with. Now, if I was doing this with the pocket cutter, which I certainly could do, I would have holes up on top, which wouldn't be really clean. I could also do it with the dowels and that would hide it, but that would be a lot of work. So the biscuit joiner is very, very handy. I use it when putting tabletops together, lots of boards, uh, different um, uh, widths, holding it together. So instead of just having my glue surface, I have my joint in there, which is a biscuit. what I was talking about. So if I was doing a tabletop, and I'm just going to use this for an example, I have this board, I could put this board together and this board together. So I do have a lot of gluing edge surface, but it's nice to help line it up with biscuits. So I can also have my biscuit in here and I can go right down on that. Very similar to what you're doing over here. So the dowling jig is very nice, but the biscuit joiner is so much easier. Now let's see if we can Put this back together. Our threes, our twos, fours, sixes, and fives, and ones. Bingo. All right, let's get some biscuits. Now, the biscuits, they're over here. So, I'm going to come out and grab uh, some of the biscuits. So, we have our zeros, we have our tens. And look at that, that's a sad sight. We're almost out of 20s. Now, when gluing this, I would put glue on and get glue in there. All right, once I put this in here, that's gonna go, then I would put the glue on that 
and then slide that right in. Now look at that. No glue. Strong as me. Unbelievable. That was humor there, okay? My humor, you know, it's pretty bad. Make sure your glue's out. Now, what I am doing, and you guys should know this, is I'm dry clamping. I want to make sure everything works before I go to glue. Just in case I didn't go far enough in or there was a problem. Or go, oh no, how do I now get that in? I will have to separate it a little bit. Go in and... Look at that. Perfect. Now, if I had thought about this before and I went with one board and labeled the pieces, I would have the grain all perfectly lined up. I didn't do that. I just thought about it now. Would have been nice. Pretty close, though. Pretty. So that is really strong. Biscuit joiner. Uh, very, very, very nice. Now, we're going to go to this old Goldie. This one right here, if you're going to notice in here, it will have different diameters here, and this is for different size dowel rods. So we're going right in here. That is the most common, your 3 8 So what you would do is you would take this, you're going to line it up, I would have to go into a vise. Okay, so I'm going to clamp this on, make sure it's nice and flat, smooth. Clamp it in a vise. Do not hold this. Do not have your friend hold it. And now all I'm going to do is, I'm going to go right in here. Now, when I went in here, I'm just going to use this one. So if I go on here, I'm now touching the wood. I want to go half of this distance up. So roughly right about there. You actually want to be a little higher. So that's not what I'm drilling. I hit the wood. I'm only going halfway in. So when I go down he into here... I'm taking it right to the tape. So now, my dowel rod will go in that. One of the things you want to make sure is that you go a little deeper than the dowel rod uh, is. Because if you put glue in there and there's too much glue, these have little slots for some glue to come out. But if there's too much glue in there, you can't compress it. It won't fit. So now, I am now going to line this up to another board. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get my 3 8 This is where I'm going in. Now, I could be taking this board here, and I could line up where I want to go, right there. So now that's where I'm lining up. So I take my jig, and I'm lining that right up there into the center. We're going to see if you can see that magic. Right in the middle, you're going to see that hole. Now, I'm going to show you another way that's really easy to do. So here are my boards. They're sitting beautiful. This is precise. So now I'm going to come over, and I'm going to take my combination square. This is a combination square. Why is it a combination square? I always love throwing these in. I'm going to make you think. 90, 45, and level. There's a combination of things there. So remember, when I say the combination square, you'll know which one to get. So that's where I'm lining up. So now what I want to do is I am going to take this line right here and I can bring it across. Now, if we take our dowling jig, you're going to notice we're doing 3 eighths right here. So there's my line that I'm going to want to do right there. 
So what I'm going to do is take this up and see that I'm lining that up perfectly right there. So here's my line, there's my line on the jig. So now, I go in. Remember, I gotta take it down just to the tape. Bingo. Now we're gonna do is take a little bit on there. And now what I am gonna do is I am gonna line my lines up. There you go. So now when I go there, that's what I'm gonna line up on. That's, that is my pivot point. I already have it there, but better yet, I just come down here and I'm gonna go, what was our number again? Three eighths. So I'm gonna, oops, I'm on the wrong side. Three eighths. And what I'm gonna do is lock that in. And there my boards are. Check out those lines. Jeez. So here we have is the biscuit joiner. So we lined up here. Now what we're gonna do is if we come across here, we're gonna go up. We're gonna line these two up. And line up our dowling jig. I'm trying to get it so you can see it, but also I'm on the right one. All right, so now we're going in here. So you're noticing this is a little bit longer than with the biscuit joiner, but uh, dowels are good. Try to see it so you can see what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing. I'm lined up. Again, now, if I wanted to, I could do two on this, because if you put one in, uh, you might have, it's going to spin. You do two, it won't spin on you. So there we have it. So you can do a picture frame with biscuit joints. You could do it with uh, dowel rods. Nice thing about dowel rods is I said there's two, two so it doesn't spin. This is what I used to do. I don't do this anymore, but if you want to challenge and learn how to do these, this is a very, very uh, good thing to do. If you don't have a, a biscuit joiner, go get a dowling jig. It's very good to do. I look forward to seeing you in class.